first I create a tab where I will put the fields that will be validated. So here I put a category of tasks. There are four categories and I name each one from category one to category four. Then I create three fields for the priority, low, medium and high. So we can put that aside and later on we will uh, use them to validate our fields in our task list. Talking of which, let's build it. So we have first the estimate, uh, days, hours, months, whatever. And we just put also left to do, the time that is left to do. Here I will put the priority and for the priority, I will be using the validation field that we had created before. I just go in there, low, medium, high, I select those three and then I can just pick and choose the one I want. Next field, I will just put the task name itself. What is, what is it that we are doing? The next field will be the task category. And this is where we will be driving the different colors that we have on our uh, progress uh, chart. So here, same, we, uh, we select data uh, list. And then the validation, we select those four here. status in order for me to calculate the status i need some other fields and uh, so i will put this one aside for the time being now i'm leaving a blank field and then i put together some 10 cells so i put the resource here and then i will put 10 cells here that will be for the progress chart now the two fields I was mentioning before, I'm just creating them now. So there is a field called done. So that's very simple. You you just take what was estimated and you remove the left to do. And the percentage complete, it's what has been done divided by the estimate. So here we have 0 0.8. Let's put that into percentage. That's 80%. Okay. Now, in order to calculate status, I'm going to use, I uh, will be using the ifs. So ifs is a formula that is relatively recent. Uh, so if you don't have that, you can just do nested if instead, if you have an older version of Excel. So here, if the percentage complete is zero, that means the task has not started. If the percentage complete is one, which is 100%, that means the task is completed. And for any other situation, I'll put in progress uh, because it has to be between zero and one. So now we're just checking that it works. Now, in order to put a little bit of colors on the priority, um, I have selected those three colors that I would like to use. So the, if you want to use some standard blue, you can, but if you want to use exactly the colors I've had, uh, you need to take note of those hex fields here. So it's just uh, a simple validation uh, format only cells that contain, and then I will select the first uh, value of the list, which is low, and then I can put the, the hex value in here that I had for the low value, which is some type of blue. Now I do the same for the others, manage rule. This time I duplicate the rule and equal to, I'll just put the next field here, which is medium. So if equals to medium, what do I do? I'll put another color, which is this uh, strong blue that I had there. Now this is done. And duplicate again. But before I do that, I put a white font uh, on those fields. Now going back to the to the red. So for the red, I just put copy and paste the hex here. So that would be for the high, would be for the third one. I just changed the color this time to white as well of the font. Now this is done. 
Now here I'll be doing exactly the same process, but with the, the status this time. And I will be hard coding the field here in progress, hard coded. So I just, I'll just do the same with those three fields this time. But this time I'm, I'm not duplicating the rule, I'm just doing it one by one because the, those are hard-coded values and uh, Excel can play up a bit when we duplicate hard-coded values. You have to be very careful of the codes to, to simplify my task. I'm just uh, re-entering it every time. And I choose the different color for each. Before I apply, I want to do the last one. And for not, start, not started, I put the red. I just, just go to, to the red and I put the same hex code that I have for the red before. So this is it. So I'm doing this quite quickly because we, we want to go for what is really specific in this spreadsheet, which is the uh, the people's face, I suppose. Okay, so next I will be working with uh, the, the completion bar. So in order to do that, I create, uh, I have these 10 cells I put closer together and I put uh, 0.1 all the way to 1 with 0.1 increments. And then I go um, position myself to the first cell. I put new rule. And here the rule that I have is, uh, I'm just going to give you a little bit of time to, to digest it. Depending on the category and depending on the percentage completion, if it's what the field above is, if it's the same thing, then I put such color. Uh, if it's a, another category, I put a different color. So, and after it's very easy to duplicate, you just put category one and then you put category two because we have named those, those fields. And this is actually naming cells. It's just a, a very good way when you have this in a conditional formatting. You can actually just change them after very quickly instead of remembering the, the cell itself. So here I'm doing it. Uh, it all depends on the, so there's two components, the category and uh, the value of the cell above. Here for the purple, uh, there's a third color. I just select the purple and I go into other colors and I put the slider up. So that gives me a paler purple. I want all my fields to be pale here. So now it, it looks like it's working. <laughs> so now just what I want to do is I want to do a bit more formatting. I want to put a light gray, the lightest gray that you can have. Let's say the first one there on that list and same here, but I want to keep the resource cells i want to keep them as white all the rest there so the done and percentage complete i'm not too concerned about those because they will be um they will be they will not show and here what i do is i just select more borders and i just put a thick white border across everything across the whole lot and i press the out, out, outline and inside so here you go so that gives you a little bit more of a visual here as mentioned i go to data group and I hide those. I don't really know, uh, need those. They don't need to be updated. They are being calculated. So now I'm just doing a little bit of tidying up by removing the green lines. I don't like green lines. And then I'm just putting uh, uh, another heading here. So now I'm just checking. The one that we haven't shown yet is the, the purple. So it works. Okay, now the starting point, obviously, if you want to put photos of people, it's just to have a photo of them some, somewhere. So hopefully a bit clearer than this one, a bit more smiley, <laughs> smilier than this one. This one is actually quite good. Uh, but I assume that you'll have some. So the first thing I'd like to do is to have this white border here. I think that helps. So it, uh, it gives a bit of a, of a buffer uh, for the cell. We'll see how it works later on. But uh, in order to put um, a border, it's, if you don't know how to do it, it's very simple. You just go to picture border and you, you put a weight, a very thick one, uh, maybe this this thick, and then you put a color white here. Uh, you'll see that uh, that's useful. Um, now there are two ways to, to do this. So the first way is you insert your picture uh, by importing it directly. 
um, but we don't want to do that here because we want to add this border. So here I will assume that you have uh, pictures, I'm just going to put this guy aside, uh, that you have uh, pictures for the resources. So what you do is you copy, uh, control C, and then you go on the field where you want the picture to be, and you put a paste, paste picture in cell. You don't want to do paste picture because it will just duplicate the picture, but you paste picture in cell this way. Now, if you had the picture somewhere else, you could just have done the same, insert picture, um, place in cell. And then if you have it on your device, you bring it back this way. But I think it's good to manipulate it a little bit before we inputting in those fields. So now I'm just going to do the same with the free. I'm just going to copy and I'm going to paste it this way. And a smiley one, I'm just going to put it this way here. Okay, so okay, so they are all um, here, but this is not the final destination. What where we want them to be is we want them to be here, right? Resource, right? So what we do is we click on the cell. Now it's a cell like any other, and I will be naming this one John, and I name name the cell. Be very mindful to click in twice, and then you go back. You should see the name here. Here I'm just going to call it Patrick. And here, I'm going to call it Mary. So what is inside the cell, it's, it's showing picture, picture, picture. Uh, the, the, it's only the name that we have changed here. The value of the cell is only this picture. So Microsoft doesn't want you to put text and picture. So this is the, the, the way of sending the message, I suppose. And now when we go there, the best way that I found is just to put the name here. And I put equal uh, at the beginning. And this is the key. You need to put equal. So if you have only one resource doing everything, you can just drag it down. And look, it just sends everything back. It's wonderful, isn't it? But I want this guy just, uh, just to do marketing stuff for the time being. I, I didn't want to link one resource per task category. I wanted to give the freedom. So you can have him doing two things. You can he have him doing marketing and sales and the other doing the, the other stuff. But uh, I'm just going to put... Uh, cells here yes i was uh, a bit a bit fancy i just put a, a a green background for the for the green category here so here i'll put marie and after i can just copy and paste her so to speak here and then uh what did i want the delivery the delivery i just can okay patrick for the delivery, I just take Patrick. Delivery Patrick. So it is as easy as that. Um, now you have name, you can change name uh, whenever you want, however you want, and that just brings the cell back. You only accept the name here that because there is an equal in front, otherwise it would not work. Now, to show you how simple and powerful that is, I can refer to a photo cell uh, the same way as it was a proper cell. Now, let me give you an example. It might be a little bit clearer. So I could do a sum if, and the range, I will select the resource range. As a criteria, I will just click on this. I want this to be equal to this. And then you select a range that you would like to sum. And it works just by referring to the photo cell. Uh, something to know that if you want to use, so click on the FX there and you want to see the, the full function. It doesn't like it when you refer to a cell that is a photo cell, but uh, if you just ignore the, the big flashing red, it, uh, it should go away and it should work uh, properly. So you could do the same with, uh, with let's say, Mary and Patrick, and you put the equal as usual. As always, uh, you give them the same width, roughly. And then if you drag this down, it was just calculated automatically. I think this is, this is quite remarkable.
See, this one had quite a, quite a bit to do. Now this is um, this is good, I think. So obviously you can uh, tidy that up. Uh, you can put uh, some. I don't know if you want to do it, but you can put a bit of a text box here on top. You might want to put it on a different tab. Um, I think I'll end up putting it on a different tab, but uh, you can put uh, the color here this way. And here, what did we have? Outstanding. And if I control D, I put this uh, uh, done. All good. So you see that once you put a white border, this is showing a little bit of space between the, the cells. Uh, I recommend that you have the peaks on the same size here. Uh, this is something that I found uh, quite important, uh, but you play around with it, you'll notice that otherwise some uh, have a different uh, size, strangely enough. And uh, so this also, if you want to hide it, you probably want to hide this. So you do the usual data group and you hide it this way. And this it might look a bit odd here, so you might want to put it with a with a validation maybe or with the another one which is summary. But that's it for me.